So in this video, I want to talk about the Beaver Builder cache or caching. So either or, but basically let's just go over to Google and we can see that caching is the process of storing data in a cache and a cache is a temporary storage area. So what that means is if we go to this URL here, these images are downloaded to our computer. And then if we revisit this URL, instead of going back to the server where this website is and then requesting the information and having to download the images, they are stored on your computer so that when you go back a second time, you actually get these images from the cache in your computer versus having to go and download them again from the server. Now, so why do we do this? Because it allows us to access websites faster and get information faster. So caching is all about allowing us to browse the web in a faster state. So in terms of that, that's a browser cache. We go to a URL and it downloads the images and stores it in the browser's cache. So for, for instance, here I'm using Chrome. Chrome has a built-in browser cache and that in turn is downloading these images and putting it in the Chrome cache. Now, Beaver Builder also has its own caching system. And again, like a browser cache, it is done to allow us to do things faster. So the Beaver Builder cache does two things. When we render a page, so say we have this page here, it's made up of images, JavaScript files, and CSS files, and obviously the HTML. Now we're gonna see exactly how it works, but I just wanna go through this video because caching is one of those things where it allows you to do things faster and we sort of take it for granted sometimes, but it does cause a few errors. So for example, if you're building a website and you make a change to it, and then you go back to the page and it, your changes aren't there, it's most likely a caching error because instead of going to the server and downloading the changes you've just made, it's actually just using the cached version. So the one that was there from the previous thing before you made those changes, and that's why you're not seeing those changes. And this is one of the biggest headaches uh, in as being a web designer or building your own website is caching, where you're not seeing the changes that you've just made and you have no idea why it's occurring. So let's just jump in and I'll go to the settings in Beaver Builder. So let's go back to our WordPress dashboard. And then you'll see under settings and page builder, there's a tab that says cache. And if we click on that, it says a CSS and JavaScript file is dynamically generated and cached each time you create a new layout. Sometimes the cache needs to be refreshed when you migrate your site. So basically what this is saying is that each time you build a page, a CSS and JavaScript file is generated to to build that layout that you've just created. And then they're stored in the Beaver Builder cache so that when you or a visitor go back to that URL, it downloads those CSS and JavaScript files that were rendered after you built your page. So where is this caching folder? Let's go into our cPanel. So you can go into your FTP client and follow along if you'd like. And in the public HTML folder, let's go to WP content. And then we want to go to uploads and then we want to go to BB hyphen plugin. And then you can see there's the cache folder. So let's click on that. So you'll see currently if we just sort this uh, by type, there's some images. So dot JPEGs, there's some CSS files, which is dot CSS and there's some JavaScript, which is dot JS. Now you can see that there's a number here. So 1641 hyphen layout hyphen, hyphen partial dot CSS, 560671. Now the important thing to take away from what you're seeing here and something that's very valuable is that this is actually the post ID. So let's have a look. Let's go back to the front end of our website. And let's inspect element. And again, this is our home page. And we can see that the page ID for our home page is 560. And again, we can confirm that by clicking edit page. 
and we can see up here in the URL post equals 560, which is the post ID for our home page. So if we switch back to the cPanel, 560-layout.css, 560-layout.js. So these two files are used to build this page. So let's go ahead and let's just delete these two files here. So they're gone now. And then let's refresh this page. So again, remember our homepage, the page ID is 560. And then let's reload. And you can see now they're back and the current time is 11.30 a.m. So they've just been rendered. So that's another important thing here is that if a cache doesn't exist for a page, as soon as that page is loaded on the front end, so you or a visitor go to that URL, Beaver Builder generates the CSS and JavaScript file to make this layout. And now anytime somebody else visits this URL, it uses these. So these aren't generated every time somebody visits a page. They're generated once if it doesn't already exist. And then anyone else that visits that page after the cache has been built, they actually use those files. And that allows them to access the websites faster. So let's build on this idea and go back to our caching folder. And I'm just going to delete every file that's in the Beaver Builder caching folder. So now it's empty. And then let's refresh our home page, which we already know has the page ID of 560. And then let's refresh our caching folder. And there it is. So 560, the layout.css and the layout.js. Now I want to show you something really cool. And if we go into our WordPress dashboard and then we go to templates, all templates, and we look for the footer row. So here's our footer widgets row. So let's just view this. So here it is here, and let's say that we wanted to add this at the bottom of our homepage. So again, this is a saved Beaver Builder template, and Beaver Builder templates are their own post type, as we can see in the URL, fl-builder-template. So if we view this footer widgets saved template, and then we inspect the code, we can see that it has the post ID of 1641. And again, we can confirm that by editing the template. And up the top, it's 1641. So the post ID for this saved Beaver Builder template is 1641. And again, the way that I created this was I just went to the home page launch the page builder, and then I built that row, and then I clicked the wrench, and then I clicked save as, gave it a name and clicked save. So that's how I saved this footer widgets row. So anytime you do that, like we've seen in previous lessons, it creates a new post under the Beaver Builder post type, that is fl-builder-template. So now that this is its own post and it has its own post ID, if we go back to the home page and we launch Beaver Builder, and then we go to our saved rows, and then we drag our footer widgets row, so that one that we just saw, onto the page. So there it is there. And then we publish the changes. Now, technically, if we break that down, we have our home page, which has the po which has a page ID of 560. And then at the bottom, we're inserting a Beaver Builder template that we saved, which has its own post ID. So what does that mean? It means when we generate this page, we generate it here to build the 560, so the main page. 
but then we also generate the layout of the saved row. And again, that row had the ID of 1641. So if we go back and we refresh the page now, so our caching folder, we can see 1641 has been generated. So that's a very important thing to note here. Each Beaver Builder layout, so saved row, each saved layout, and each page has its own post ID, and thus it has it generates its own CSS and JavaScript files in the cache. So just to reiterate, we have that row that we saved added down the bottom, and then we have the template that already exists. And what that means is it has to generate CSS and JavaScript files for just this layout, and then it generates them as well for the main page. As I discussed at the start of this video, if you're making changes and you're not seeing them live on your website, so just say we're going and building the home page, we launch Beaver Builder, and let's just say we update this image here to a different image and we save the page. But then when the page reloads, it does, we don't see that new image. What you can do is go back to your WordPress dashboard, go to settings and then page builder, go to the cache and click clear cache. And again, it's just gonna remove the CSS and JavaScript files from the cache. So if we click clear cache, So updated, that's, that's taken effect. And then we reload the caching folder. There's nothing in it. So this button here literally just goes to the caching folder in WP, in public HTML, WP content, uploads, BB plugin and cache. So it goes to this folder and it just deletes every file that's in that folder. So that's what that button does. And what that means is, again, like I've said, now when we visit a website, so if we go back to our homepage, Beaver Builder regenerates the cache, so it regenerates the CSS and JavaScript files for that, cache, for that page. And because it's deleted everything, then started rebuilding, any changes that you weren't seeing, that, that you thought that you should be seeing, because the cache is being rebuilt, you will see those changes as expected. Now, there's another thing that I want to show you in this lesson. And if we launch the Beaver Builder to edit this home page, and let's just say we want to change this image here. So let's just say, let's just duplicate this and then click and then select photo. And let's just select a random one. So uh, this road picture or maybe Let's do this one here, so it's called remy.jpg. So let's select the photo. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna put the full size at 1300 pixels wide by 731 high and put it in there. Or if you use this crop field here, we could make it landscape. Which takes this full size image and then crops it to a landscape aspect ratio, or we could choose panorama. We could make it portrait. We could make it square. And we could make a circle. Now, each time we do that, Beaver Builder isn't just using CSS or, or something like that. It's actually taking this image and cropping it and then creating a whole new image at that specified uh, crop ratio. So landscape would be like a 16 by nine sort of ratio. So it gets this image, crops it to 16 by nine, but actually turns it into its own separate image file. And these are stored, as you would guess, in the caching folder. So let's reload this. And you can see as we went through and we changed that drop down for the crop, 
it was going through and creating all these different images. So it takes the image name hyphen and then the crop. So if we chose circle, it was getting the remy.jpg, cropping it as a circle and then doing remy-circle.jpg. And it's 11.45 now, so you can see these were all just done as we changed the dropdown. So we've got landscape, panorama, portrait, and square. So that's just another thing to note that when you do choose this, it's actually generating a new image file for that crop and putting it into the caching folder. Now, the last thing that I wanna show you in this video, and it relates to using the Beaver Builder theme. If we go into the customize, so click up here, which launches the theme customizer for the Beaver Builder theme. When we change, you know, the layout, you know, we make this content uh, 1020 uh, wide. Uh, we change the accent color to a red. When we're going through and making all these changes, let's just change the text color to maybe like a green and click save. When we do that, there's actually a caching folder for the Beaver Builder theme. And if we go back to our public HTML, WP content, and then uploads, there's, we were in the Beaver B, that we were in the BB hyphen plugin before. There's actually a BB hyphen theme folder. And if we click in there, you can see there's the customizer and the skin. And these were created at 1147, which was just now. So that's important as well. Every time you change here and click save, it regenerates the CSS file for your theme and the appearance that you set based on the settings here. So I hope that helps. Uh, again, it's something that just happens behind the scenes, but it's always good to know how it works because the most important thing that you will find when you're building websites is that you make a change and you don't see it happen and you have no idea why it hasn't taken effect and it's most likely a caching issue. Now, another quick fix, that's to clear the Beaver Builder cache. So again, if you're not seeing the changes that you've made in Beaver Builder, you can go back to the Beaver Builder settings and click the clear cache button. So that's the Beaver Builder plugins cache, but your browser cache, sometimes your browser cache could be playing up. What I do is I hold the shift key and I click the refresh button and that clears your browser cache. So there are two ways that you should clear the cache if you're not seeing the changes that you think that you've just made and they should be taking effect, but they, they haven't gone live for some reason. So that's it for this video. I hope you learn a lot and let's move on to the next lesson.